after 1000 AD, there was a thought that it was now time to restore all things. A body of literature developed that there would be a finding of the grail. In our modern culture, this concept of Christ being married and having children is often wound up in the sensationalized stories of the Holy Grail. Is it just an accident that the search for the Grail, the quest, resonates with so many people? Why was this knowledge, this history, hidden from the world? Some stories depict the Grail as a special cup. There are even some ancient legends that say, oh, this is the chalice that was used at the Last Supper. A 9th century Psalter, or Book of Psalms, from Paris, France, portrays the crucifixion of the Son of God with a grail chalice near his hand. They believed that there was a bloodline of Israel, of David. Some ancient Irish legends claim that Jeremiah traveled to Ireland accompanied by one of the princesses of Judah. Was Jeremiah perhaps a protector of the royal bloodline of the house of Israel? The legends of the Grail are wide and they're varied, and there is a sense of hidden mystery surrounding it. Because even the famous stories of King Arthur and his knights at the Round Table are related. Traditionally, Arthur and some of his knights are claimed as direct descendants of Joseph of Arimathea. Medieval legends claim that all unicorns were hunted and killed. Only a few escaped and went into hiding. Is this an allegorical legend intended to lament the fate of the Lord's children? Were some of his descendants identified and put to death? Mary Magdalene was at the foot of the cross when the Son of God was crucified. There are legends that Mary Magdalene traveled across Scotland, or perhaps that she even lies buried on the Isle of Iona in Scotland. This island is considered to be one of the most sacred places in the world by some Christians, by Druids, and the ancient Celtic Christians. Medieval tradition claims that the horn of the unicorn has medicinal and magical properties to heal. The prophet Joseph Smith's work heals the breach between Judah and Ephraim. Joseph knew that he was a direct descendant. He knew it. He understood it. He understood the implications. And what do we see in history? Not only do we see evidence of Ephraim being led to Northern Europe, but we also see the tribe of Judah. The Lord united them in the lands of the North with the promise that one day they would return to their homeland. I believe in many respects that this is the record we will receive when we finally discover the records of the lost tribes of Israel. It's somewhere out there. This is the record that the Lord will give us when we repent and when we become humble as a people. When we become righteous enough the Lord will give us this history, and I am certainly looking forward to that day.